84 gold for 28 coffee berries. No, thank you. And, uh, hello there. It has pleased us to declare war on the King of England. We expect you to attack his colonies in the New World. Well then, we can say as you wish, declare war, maximum tax rate decreases. In principle, we would be happy to, your majesty, if you support us, declare war, get troops, or my regrets, your majesty, it does not seem appropriate at this time. Relationship with the English colony improves, maximum tax rate increases. Now you can get some events when you declare independence to receive support from the other colonies and the other kings if you want to do that. If you're nice enough to people, I mean. So that's something to consider. But I would like some proper soldiers, if you wouldn't mind, sir. England is not that far away. We could take them on. If we do this, then the English will also get this pop-up, I think, where they can get some soldiers. Because otherwise, you could just go crush them with some European light and infantry, like, easy. I think in this instance, it might, might be best to declare war, get the maximum tax rate decrease instead of getting troops. Because I don't want the English to also get troops. So we'll go ahead, we'll listen, we'll declare war for the king. We lost our defensive pact with Sitting Bull and Pine Leaf. And people are going to be more upset in our colonies because we now have... We no longer have the treaty with the English. And we have wars of other Europeans. Three anger. That actually reduced the maximum tax rate by four, so we're down to 62%. Nice. We'll just make peace with the English as soon as we can. Our hardy pioneer and expert miner have arrived in Boggy Bay. Expert miner is going to get to work doing his thing as a ore miner, of course. There we go, then the hardy pioneer is, um, is going to improve the silver resource first. We want more money. Our master roaster also arrived. Let's get him set up in his little house, making some coffee. So now we produce six coffee per turn. Two of that is going to get eaten immediately, so that's 28 gold per turn, just from domestic demand, and four coffee left over to distribute to other colonies if we can get them set up with markets eventually. That is of course the goal. Got another promotion on the scout that now has a medic. For him, we might go with something like faint. Alternatively, could give him like a wild animal hunter. So it could be a uh, patrolman, but he's already a medic. We want him to be with the military. Let's not pick anything actually. Let's just wait. There's no reason to pick right now. We just have that blue haze over our Scout, that's all. I've got a free colonist here that is going to take absolutely forever to get home. Unless he gets a ship ride. 24 turns. If he goes for a ship ride. Or to walk back to the colonies, it's going to be like 35, 39 turns. That's pretty bad. Pretty bad. But, bright side is, there's an expert farmer village along the way. So maybe we can get him trained up. This small coastal ship would probably be pretty good to go trade with the natives now that I think about it. We can use them to actually supply our fur if we really wanted to do so. We've got an immigrant coming up in a second. I'd rather not do the Vintager or the Spice Trader. I'd rather just do the Free Colonist, so we're going to go with that. Might even make him a missionary. I think our next major goal is going to be barley production with a baker. So, ideally, an expert farmer and a master baker. Baker's house is done in Red Fox. Wonderful. I think next it's going to be a very strong move to set up... Oh, a lumber mill, actually. Let's do that. Yeah, it's time to do that. I wanted to do a level 2 fur production building. We could do a granary, yeah, for food storage one day, too. Or a medical office in not too long. Lumber mill is going to take 12 turns. Maybe, maybe we need a... Yeah, we're at zero health. Unfortunately, we have to do a medical office first. And then we'll go into a lumber mill after that, most likely. And we're being challenged to build five more bakeries, but that's not going to happen. Well, five bakeries in total. But still, the point stands. It's not going to happen. Oh, yes. In River of Pigs, we're going to want maybe ore production instead of peat, produ peat production. I think that makes sense to me. Unfortunately, we already have crime here and unrest. That is pretty impressive. What is that coming from? Just because of the yeah the war with the other Europeans and because of crime. Crime caused by wars. 
Yeah, being at war sucks, man. Sadly, he will not talk to us. A lot of our colonies are actually upset now. Rusty Clam's upset. And River of Pigs is upset. Hey, hey, the ranch is built on the horses. This guy could really get a lift down to Boggy Bay to work on the silver mine. I think that's what we're going to do with him next. Alright, blacksmith house is done. Now the blacksmith can finally do his actual job. We have toll production domestically. Alright, after that, we're going to need some law and order, it looks like. We can generate some by building that chapel, right? That dissolution missionary will be here not too, too long, hopefully. So let's get the chapel built. A dangerous wild animal is scaring our citizens. Well, let's go ahead and let's spend some gold to get an expert hunter. 500 gold is pretty good for one of those. It's a good thing we had that money, otherwise we would have gone to, to uh, some turn of disorder. Let's sell all our cargo here. 2,209 gold. Ugh. Alright, 2,848 gold. Siberian Lumberjack gets on the boat. Free colonist. Maybe you get turned into a missionary right now. Let's consider what we want to do with him. As always, I do like to first finish my turn before spending money. You gotta pay your bills before you have your uh, excess cash. Alright, we found an expert cotton planter village right here in two Nova. We're gonna send the free colonist there instead. That's much more valuable to, lear to learn. Although I'm doing that, maybe we'll get an expert cotton plant before they even arrive. But hey, whatever. Alright, Mr. Expert Hunter. Be pretty good if we could have you work on the red foxes. There's a Siberian lumberjack working there at the moment though. We could also have you just work in the thicket. But we might go negative on health. We do not immediately go negative on health. Since we can sustain that expert hunter there, I'm going to go ahead and leave him where he is. I do really want to move this Siberian Lumberjack somewhere else though. It reduces our lumber output by one, but now I can switch one of these dudes over to do some premium fur instead. That would actually allow us to make some premium coats. And let's switch the master fur trader. Well, no, the master. No, let's do the master roper over to premium coats. We won't make as much food, but that's okay. It'd be better to have an expert trapper doing this job, but this will do for now. Maybe one day we'll have a free colonist do this job until he learns how to do it. All right, end of turn. We got a boatload of money to spend. All right, so we definitely want a couple of things here. We want a expert farmer. Then we want a master baker. We have 1,800 gold. That's not quite enough for a renowned medic. What we may have to do is just save up for the renowned medic and take everybody as they are right now. This free colonist might end up learning trapping. He might get a lift to the village, or I might just train him the hard way. That is going to leave us with a pretty vulnerable, vulnerable amount of gold, though. I think we'll be okay. The odds of us getting some more gold on the next couple of turns from exploration are pretty high. We have the joy of little things because we now have a blacksmith house. And this is the story for you. Hey, hey, we found another overseer to round out our collection for Red Fox Bay. Oh my goodness, it's not Red Fox Bay anymore, is it? It's Red Fox. 42 turns to walk there. That is impressive. Let's just aim for the coastline and see what happens. Hmm. It seems the crow will sell premium furs for about two gold each. We could turn those premium furs into premium coats. I think that makes sense to buy these. It also makes sense to buy the fur as well. 156 gold, I'll take that. Wonderful, medical office is finished in Red Fox. I think I'd like to go ahead and build a stockade just to get a little more happiness in the colony. After that, we, not, we might need to build the saloon or the town market. Town market builds faster. I think we build the town market. No, 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 no. We need the lumber mill. That's right. Yeah, lumber mill after the stockade. This friggin' free colonist has been working for 18 turns to be a master carpenter, and we have not great happiness. I think he should flip here pretty soon. We can only hope. Alrighty, we have a failed trader that arrived in Boggy Bay. He's going to be a much better carpenter than a powder keg guy. Do I need to consider where to set this guy up for gunpowder production? Might want to pull the master powder maker out. I forgot this dude exists, so I don't want to forget he's there. Or maybe better yet, let's just put him making Liberty Bells. 
It'll get us a negative on food, but it won't reduce our lumber too quickly. We received another converted native. Nice. This guy, what do we do with him? I really, really wish that we had access to a fisherman or a farmer trainer that was nearby. Sadly, our options are quite limited, almost purely to cash crops and a boatload of hunting, but eh. Best thing to do with this guy might be to do some lumber chopping. Although I'd really prefer for him to do something else that he's actually really good at. And the best we can probably do is set him up doing some lumber and then maybe fishing one day in River of Pigs, I think. We'll work based on that idea. Sitting Bull wants to offer us some native slaves. 270 gold is not bad considering how much value you can get out of them. But man, they upset the population, so I really don't want to do that. Alright, an orthodox missionary of mine arrived at Asante to establish a mission. I am kind of wondering if I should establish a mission somewhere else, but I don't know for sure. Sitting Bull, what kind of bonuses does he get? I don't think he gets anything towards native conversion rate. Yeah, no. So I want to keep up relationships with the crow. And it does look like the crow have a very limited number of villages, actually. They only have four villages. Oh, is it, I think it was like a fifth one up here. So one, two, three, four, five. And I think that's it for them. Oh yeah, and the island as well. Yeah, we want to keep good relations with these dudes. So I'd much prefer to set up a mission in Ehartsar. Alright, we have arrived with our farmer, baker, and all that jazz, but we don't have anybody... Well, actually we have the free colonists. Let's use a free colonist to fix the health, at least temporarily. So now we can pull out the farmer. Farmer can do his barley thing. Seven barley per turn. Very good. Will be a lot better once we have some farms, though. And Baker can start doing his baker thing. So now we make provisions. Siberian Lumberjack, we need to find a really good place to set that guy up. If we can get a colony over here on the lumber, the timber, and the horses, that'd be nice. But I don't think it's going to work for now, so let's search for a good location. I think the best location is going to be in Roughneck. And that does make sense, they are all about that lumber, wood, pearl production after all. And my gosh, they make how much food from the colony square? That's eight food from the colony square, wow. We can pick peanuts or barley, I'm gonna do barley. Should have been doing that earlier actually. Always double check when you found your colonies what kind of good that you want to produce on the colony square. It is a un fairly unknown thing to know that. And it will change if you don't specify it. Because I think it's always whatever makes the most money. They're already pretty pissed off and roughneck though, so I'm not sure if I want to set the lumberjack up there. We can fit him here, and we do have a quest that involves us trying to reach 20 population, so let's make some lumber here. Three more population and we'll make it to 20. And there's actually a pretty decent reward, I think. Hey, hey, we're up to 17 horse production per turn, now that we have that ranch. Our scouts require so little horses and provisions that we could reasonably use them to move around our colonies eventually. So that'll, that'll be pretty cool to look forward to. You can do it normally, but you need significantly more horses and provisions with other colonies. You know, I was saying that we'd get that renowned medic, but man, we have not gotten lucky over the past couple of turns with getting random money. Can I finally? Nope, still cannot make peace with this dude. Hey, we had a native slave earn his freedom. Wonderful. I mean, that's a little bad in a way because now we have reduced food production because he no longer has a 40% modifier. That's just too bad. Because of that, now we're actually negative on food. We've got enough premium furs on hand that we can actually swap the fur trader over to premium fur production for a little while. Not premium fur production, but premium coat production. And have the roper do some regular coat production. Unfortunately, premium coats only sell for 12 in comparison to the 10 of regular coats, but that is better no matter what, so eh. I'm gonna send our little small coastal ship north to trade with the Huron and see what they have. So the silver mine got done before our little free colonist pioneer got there to do some more work. 
So we're going to do the iron mine next instead. Now we did go ahead and build a road to that mine because it cost so much time and energy to get around dense terrain now. We are literally two gold short of the amount that I need for my renowned medic. Literally two gold away. We got that chapel done in Boggy Bay. Next up is maybe going to be a dock for some more food production. We could probably go ahead and build the powder production here. That particular building does take quite a while to build though. I'd rather build like a lumber mill first. Let's actually build a chevaux de free and then we'll build a dock probably into a tavern after that. So the crow want to offer up their settlement of a fog knack. Right now they're at minus one for stolen land, minus one for way of life threatening theirs. If we don't accept the settlement, I think they eventually become more upset and the settlement will never again automatically disappear. If we don't accept them, then they basically become a reservation until we probably have to destroy them eventually when they declare war on us, like almost inevitably. But maybe it's possible if we make enough missions with them to keep them around. Now they do have such a really really good missionary bonus. And now that I've got provisions rolling in, I'm thinking I'd like to start doing some missionary work with these dudes. So I think I'm going to refuse actually. They're also on a wetland with that particular village. So there's nothing I really want there. Finally we got a master carpenter. This dude finally learned how to build a house. This free colonist, I'm kind of thinking that maybe he ends up being one of the missionaries. But we don't yet have the provisions that we need. I could also start training him to be a harlot. That might not be a bad choice. We are going to need harlots, and the sooner we get him trained, the better. So let's set him up as a harlot. Have fun, bro. That only increased the happiness by one. These guys are so bad. You really need higher tier, build higher tier buildings to make non-specialists even somewhat effective. Might end up turning that harlot into a missionary. We'll see what happens. I don't really see the point in this wolf. He can't even enter cities again, so let's just get rid of him. Alright, finally, 2,939 gold. We need to snatch up that renowned medic. Or do we? We're getting by pretty fine with the medic that we have at hand. No, we're, we're not. We're, we're not. <laughs> Never mind. Renowned medic, thank you very much. And we also have a master spice trader that decided to immigrate. Not too concerned about having her around. Sadly, we don't have the money for anything else, and it is pretty late for me so it is time for me to take a break but let's go ahead and let's discuss how things are going so red fox is doing pretty good we got that bakery set up gonna start doing some missionary work here in not too long hopefully and then roughneck roughneck is roughneck it's still just a pearl mining location it will eventually be expanded but i think i want to get that quest for a 20 size city first and then we got Boggy Bay. Boggy Bay finally got toll production rolling. Going to get some iron mines going as well. And in addition to that, we'll be doing some weaving and not too, too long. River of Pigs is just doing their thing. Gathering a bunch of lumber that I can now swap over to carpentry and forget about for quite a while. And now they can get some things actually built. And hopefully stop being so pissed off. Rusty Clam is Rusty Clam. They're just a pearl mining location. Most of our colonies are like one population, actually three of them are. And then we got an 18 in Red Fox and a 7 in Boggy Bay. I think we do want to consider settling the island over here not too long. We want to lock that down as ours. And then we might want to consider expanding along the southern coast a little bit further. There's some decent land and timber down here. Like settling right here, we could get the timber, tobacco, deer, fish. it would be a pretty wonderful site, actually. Let's go ahead and let's mark that as a settle location. Exploration-wise, I'm still making a lot of money, but it's taking a lot longer to get access to that money is what's happening. Like, it's hard to see on the mini-map because the grain really blends in very well. But I have a lot of treasures just standing around. Foreign affairs wise, the Portuguese still... Oh, they've made it to three settlements just now. That is impressive. We are of course at five, but our settlers are way cheaper too. Now the English, 
I can't even tell how many they have yet. I wouldn't be surprised if they're still at two, maybe three. Part of the reason I didn't want to give them troops is because I want to potentially catch them off guard later on. And a very good source of immigration is actually other enemy colonies. We are going to sort out our food situation in Red Fox, however. So that means expert fishermen, expert farmers in not too long. Could also start up some pig production in River of Pigs and start butchering them for some food. If we get some geese, we can make really expensive like lined peg boots or something like that, I think. Might be wrong, might be wrong. The crow are at plus two overall for us. I really do want to get those missionaries rolling so that I can deepen our relationship and keep them around for as long as I possibly can and like just milk them for those converts. That's something that I actually haven't done yet. Is like a hard missionary religious game. And we have a lot of these natives wandering around, especially over here by Kaposia. We could consider building a monastery like I was talking about and staffing it. But anyway, let's zoom in real close here to get a good old look at Red Fox. Maybe make a thumbnail out of that. Probably not. Do let me know what you think of the video and the, th the thumbnails as well. If you have any advice that you'd like to give me, I'd certainly like to hear it. Anyway, I'll be back in just a moment. Alright, I am back. I hope the audio is sorted out now. I did check by having it play back in my ear for a moment, so to me it sounded correct. I have no idea what happened there. That irritated me quite a bit because I did not want to have to redo everything, you know. It wasn't too bad except for those times that the air conditioner got really bad, so I think in the future I'm just going to have to deal with the temperature differences <laughs> while I'm recording. Alright, let's get back to it. I really don't want to actually attack the English. You might want me to attack the English, but I also don't really have like a boatload of money right now. And you need quite a bit of money in order to fund a military. We have enough of a military that we could reasonably defend ourselves. But other than self-defense, we do not have an offensive detachment available. Anyway, let's get on with it. I think that events that you receive after you leave the Europe screen are based on the money uh, that you start with that turn, at least partially based on it. So we should be okay with selling some of these goods. And we got a good deal of money. We do have this little trade log on the left right here, so we can see what we got. Had a commenter that pointed that out. Now the spice trader, do we want them doing spice trading? I think that we decided that there were a few, they were on prairie hills, right? Yeah, they're on Prairie Hills, gotcha. There's a few Prairie Hills over here to the west, but it is going to be quite a while before we actually make use of those Prairie Hills. Although, there's a... We could strike hard across the western portion right here and set up along the coastline of this really big inland sea. Well, this is a lake, actually. Let me think about some potential settler locations. Alrighty, I've got a little plan for the interior. We're gonna settle a lake coastal colony right here with access to the corn for food, the wheat for even more food, some coal indigo for making colored cloth, as well as access to some prairie hills for making spices. This city could be really really powerful, but not only that, the city down south can also be really good. They'll have access to a bunch of lumber, coffee, fruit for making fruit, brandy, and iron. A little bit farther west, we've got another coastal, a uh, lake coastal city right here with access to fish, not fish, but clams, uh, loons for wild bird feathers, coal and bighorn sheep for furs, not for farming sheep. These are hunting sheep. There's also going to be a northern colony up here that's going to get access to more arctic foxes, more beavers, elk, deer, etc. Now these are polar foxes, not arctic foxes, gotcha. I'm thinking that we'd also like to have a settlement down here with access to more horses and furs and wood. We could in theory build it on the tundra hill right here. It would have no food whatsoever, but then we'd be able to lock down this pass right here 
no unit could get past these mountains that doesn't have the ability to mountain climb without going all the way around to the west or going really far to the east and south over here. Look how well connected these mountains are. Realistically though, that doesn't really matter because natives can cross mountains without much problems. But it's kind of cool for roleplay reasons, it's kind of like the, the wall in the south. You know, I never did finish Game of Thrones and I guess I'm happy I never actually finished watching that television series from the way everybody talks about it. I do want to plan one more settlement down by the silver if possible. The issue is that the settlement a little bit further to the north puts a lot of pressure on it so that anything not in line with the mountains right here is too close. So we would have to actually build in like a tundra hill in order to reach that particular silver. But there is some stone right here too. There's a lake as well. Maybe we could build right here. Hunt the deer for food. Expand the borders to the silver eventually. And then start mining it. That also give us some bighorn sheep down here. So this is a pretty cool long term settlement. It's a really, uh, it's got a Alaska vibe to it, that's for sure. Alrighty, it is the end of the turn, so I need to decide what we're going to spend our money on. I do want to keep that spice trader since we might settle that western colony not too long. We don't have to buy any land, so that's the main reason I'd like to settle it. This settlement right here, we do have to buy land from Kaposia though. I would say our primary concern right now is food, however. Looking at our land, we're going to have quite a few problems doing farming without chopping down some force. That will probably take some time. Actually, we do have hunting available. Although hunting really only produces like byproduct food, really. It's mostly just enough to do, uh, sustain the hunter usually. Sometimes with a few extra food, but not usually like a bunch. Yeah, it's definitely going to be we have to invest our gold into... Fisherman, I think. We have plus one health at the moment in Red Fox. We are going to receive a proper medic in not too long, so that'll be fixed. Our happiness is okay, but our law is not great. I have noticed that Clan Hawkins has made a lot of good use of veteran town guards, which have the Lawkeeper 1, Lawkeeper 2 promotions. So they end up providing like three law to the settlement which is actually cheaper than a renowned or an honorable judge and an honorable judge makes like i think four law at first in the basic building so in the beginning at least veteran town guards can provide a lot of law and order and you can actually train them yourself eventually and i maybe any i don't know if anybody who is a town guard gets law keeper i think they do let me check uh, they might not. They may they may not receive automatic lawkeeper. That is too bad. To make these, you need provisions and blades. Blades are made in the blacksmith shop. I think getting one of those would make sense. But at the same time, I would rather put fishermen in these two cargo slots and kind of deal with everybody being a little bit out of control temporarily. Especially while we're at War of England still. This is the first time I've actually bought expert fishermen, oddly enough. We do have 2,866 gold remaining, which means that we have, like... I think I'd want to keep 1,000 on hand, so 1,800 to spend. We have a merchantman coming in two turns with more stuff as well. Taking a quick look at our total production charts, it looks like lumber is actually only at plus one so we could use another Siberian Lumberjack. So let's go ahead and pick up another one of these. I did have a commenter argue that Siberian Lumberjacks aren't as weak as I think they are because they're so versatile. And they also actually make more goods, period. They're not just more efficient at converting one good into another good. Like a colonial distiller is better at turning sugar into rum, but it can't make more rum from nothing, basically. So that's a decent argument. I do understand that. With the addition of a lumberjack, I'd really like to consider the addition of a carpenter. We need more of those to start actually building up our colonies. After all, uh, we don't quite have the money. Let's think about something else then. 
Perhaps an expert hunter is in line. Or an expert farmer. Alternatively, I save my money for a couple turns and see what else we can get. Could be some statesman, for instance. I'd like to get some Liberty Bells, but I think before I do more Liberty Bells, I need a stronger, proper economy. Much of our economy right now relies upon exploration. Although we're making a good bit of money off pearls. It's always pearls, man. His Majesty is delighted to get coats from the colonies. He wants us to get 3,000 sold slash bought.